So remember that really bad movie with The Rock, The Scorpion King, and how it was like kind of totally awesome? Well today on Brainwave Science, we're gonna talk about real scorpions. Hi, my name is Peter, and this is Brainwave Science. Oh, I'm the scorpion king. <laughs> Did you say I'm the scorpion king? <laughs> On the last episode of Brainwave Science, we looked at an arthropod called the horseshoe crab, and we learned some cool things about its anatomy. But this time, let's dig into something a little bit creepier. Scorpions have been around for like 430 million years. These things are really, really old. And by now, you can find them on every continent, well, except for Antarctica. Scientists have discovered about 1,700 species of scorpions. But realistically, the number is probably higher than that, as there's tons of species that we haven't even found yet. Don't worry though, of those 1,700, only about 25 are known to have venom that are capable of killing human beings. You know, only 25. The scorpions we looked at are relatively harmless. A sting would be equivalent to about a bee sting, though the venom is different. But why does this one look so much skinnier than this one? Well, it turns out that this has to do with the anatomy of the scorpion's exoskeleton and the way that they molt. Dr. Hochberg explains like this. The dorsal plate is called a tergite. If you were to turn her over or him over, the ventral plate is called a sternite. When these things get fat and happy and get ready to molt, they have a pair of plates on either side, the lateral parts of the body, that are really flexible, unlike these top and bottom plates, which are inflexible, and they expand in that direction, kind of like blood handles. Start to expand out like that. And these are pretty gray in color as opposed to black tergites and sternum. So this gray area is like the scorpion's wiggle room. As the juvenile grows inside its exoskeleton, eventually it just gets too big and it needs to break out. Check out this time lapse of a scorpion molting in the link below. Now when we were filming the scorpions, we noticed these weird little things under their abdomen. See those weird little fan things on its belly? The heck is that? Well, it turns out that scorpions have something called pectines. Matt said that we could see them better under the microscope. Yeah, so those are mechano slash chemosensory organs. No one's really sure, but they're innervated with neurons. So clearly they have some sort of sensory function, but I don't know how well it's understood. But yeah, they're really large, and they're actually species-specific in terms of their shape, so you can see them there. They're on like the second epistosomal segment um, on the ventral side. We still don't really know what these pectines are for. I mean, it's clear that they have some sort of sensation, but we don't know why. These organs are larger in male scorpions, so some researchers think that it may have to do with being able to place their spermatophores. Now, without getting too much into it, let's just say that scorpion mating can get a little weird. So to recap, scorpions are awesome. They have hard plates on their backs and bellies to protect themselves, but also soft plates on the sides so they can grow when they molt. They also have mechanosensory organs called pectines, which we don't really know, but probably have to do with touching, maybe? If you learned something, please consider subscribing. My name is Peter. This is Brainwave Science. Bam! Science!